Hey everybody and welcome to a checkered wild ride with Steve-O. We've got Johnny Knoxville, the captain, and let me tell you, he is shockingly candid about his checkered pass. Completely caught me off guard the way that he just opened up about the way that we used to behave in the past with all the pills and the booze and the women and man is this one juicy we talk about old stuff new stuff and the exciting new project that he and i are working on right now this is juicy this is fun and before we get into it i want to thank everybody for making my bucket list special way more successful than its predecessor gnarly thank you for going to stevo.com and checking that out and now let's get to it People of the universe, I bring to you Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to, oh, there goes the mic. I'm glad to be here, Steve-O. Thank you for having me again and with Wendy. Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, just kind of a, a tough thing for me to live with that your previous episode on our Wild Ride podcast is by far and away the most viewed, most listened to episode that we ever did. And all it was was an exercise and you sitting down for me to talk at you the whole time and tell you your stories. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's like, what happens on his podcast? I'm like, hey, you just listen to him talk. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked you about Big Brother and he told your whole story about Big Brother. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, and, and and with that said, I think that it was a reasonably entertaining episode. Sure. But but since then, it's been important to me to grow, to uh, improve my conversational etiquette. Now, do you think you have improved? I believe I really genuinely have. Okay. Do you not? I do. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think so. I've been here, what, three minutes, and I've said three words, so I think he's done much yeah. better. <laughs> 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 well, I feel my face turning red. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. But I, I want to, uh, to to really get into it and and uh, and and make it a, a better episode. So we've got even like kind of a game plan of questions. Oh, we got some wow. hard hitting questions yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, first off, how you doing? I am effing wonderful, Steve-O. Good. Doing good. Doing good. Um, you didn't have your uh, your dog last time your dog's a newer oh bucket yeah that's why Wendy she could smell bucket on me yeah. bucket is uh yeah she's the complete center of our life it's great yeah she sleeps with Arlo every night and uh just misbehaves and uh yeah we're very happy we got her from a rescue mutt scouts they found her in a trash can in Tijuana wow and uh Emily sent me a photo of her and said I love that trash dog. So I kind of got her for Christmas for Emily and the kids. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. And um, you just came from uh, shooting a TV show. Is that? Yeah. Password with Jimmy Fallon. I did a couple of episodes. First one, I didn't do so good, folks. <laughs> but because uh, I, I got, I, I you know, usually on TV or whatever, I'm not nervous at all. But and I've done game shows, but we're playing for ourselves or charity. And but I'm playing for the contestant, and I want them to win. So I was like, <clears throat> yeah. So, um, but I think eventually got there. But uh, it's a fun game. Was a uh, Jackass Family Feud for charity? It would have had to have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all for charity. And Just Tremaine <laughs> lost for charity. Yeah. <laughs> Tremaine Did you do same. That? I, I don't I was, remember I was seeing on you on tour. that. I yeah. was on tour, yeah. so I couldn't make it. And, um, man, I, I, I regretted that I couldn't make that because uh, it, it was really like I saw it everywhere. Yeah, it was supposed to be a 30-minute episode, but they kept us forever, and then they made it their season finale, made it an hour episode. So, yeah, it was uh, – God, <laughs> we almost lost. We were like lost every round until the very last thing, and – I would have been so embarrassed. What was it like to have Danger Aaron on your team? Well, we overcame it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we, we we persevered. Um, now, like last time we had you on, um, 
I talked about about your involvement in Big Brother, <laughs> but looking back on it, there there wasn't any real uh, like discussion of how you found Big Brother. And I wonder if like if there was uh, like a kind of a, a synopsis of like graduating high school in Tennessee. Moving out to like what happened between graduating high school and and finding Big Brother. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't, you know, I moved out to become an actor, but and I'd taken some classes and I went to the American, American Academy of Dramatic Arts for like six weeks. Um, but I was kind of just spinning my wheels. And then my then girlfriend got pregnant. I'm like, I, I need to do something. And so a friend of mine got me a job writing for a couple of magazines. I started writing for magazines. Uh, I lived next door to Ant Antoine Fuqua, the director, and he got me a, he sent me to a casting director who got me a commercial agent. So I was just had all these sticks in the fire. And one day I show up on the set of Spike Jones was helping Jake. Fogelnest, I guess he was co-directing a video with Jake Fogelnest uh, for Wax, and I remember it was the it, it's unfortunate, but it was on the day the Oklahoma City bomb bombing hmm. happened because that was going. People told me on set, and Jeff. That's the first time I met Jeff. He was in the video, and Jeff uh, Tremaine. Yeah, yeah, and. I told him I wrote, and he's like, oh, you got to come by and check out the magazine. And I didn't even get to be in the video. I had to go to wait on tables, wow. you know? <laughs> so I was like, oh. And, and then I don't know how much time passed before I went down to, uh, down south to see uh, Jeff at, was World Industries. Okay. It wasn't even at Flint yet. Right. Hmm. And I walked around, he gave me a tour. And I think it was a little bit over a year or so, or maybe longer before I got the idea, maybe a couple of years before I got the idea to do the self-defense equipment. He was the only magazine that would support me and helping me buy the stun gun, taser gun. And because I had no money, I blew all the money I had. My mom gave me 300 bucks for Christmas and I got the cheapest bulletproof vest they had. <laughs> and then I was sunk, right? So <laughs> I needed support from Tremaine and he gave it to me. Did you not um, pitch the self-defense idea to like Howard Stern and the talk shows? And Yeah, yeah. I, I faxed nice. my idea to Howard Stern. <laughs> and, and like pretty far and wide, like everywhere that could possibly host oh, it. Oh, yeah. Like I pitched it to Details Magazine, like everyone you can think of. And almost across the board, people like the idea but they kind of wanted to treat it as a negative pickup they didn't yeah. they're like when you're done with it bring it to us we can't right. be a part of it until then and but i don't even think i didn't even hear back from stern but much later he goes i just thought you were some nut you know <laughs> which that's fair you know around the same time i was pitching to howard stern that i would come and douse my entire body with rubbing alcohol be set on fire and there in my boxer shorts and do backflips like and uh i they didn't want that either jeez could you imagine <laughs> that moron <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind yeah. of uh what kind of articles were you writing when you were writing articles um i, I like uh you know i i love hunter s thompson so a lot of participatory journalism type stuff i'd go somewhere or do something and write about it in freelance you'd submit it to different magazines all yeah, over yeah yeah and as you were writing you were getting commercial gigs too right luckily i started well, my first year i started auditioning for commercials full year not one call back and then my next year i got like 12 commercials and uh, I didn't think you did that anymore. <laughs> it's just water, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I was very lucky because I had a kid then. And, and that, that's how you met Preston? You guys were delivered, like, uh, 
Because we were talking about, you know, some of the worst jobs that, you know, people had. Before. Preston, I think, had some of the worst jobs. Um, one of his jobs, he, he worked at a, a waste disposal place. And there was a screen that caught all the condoms and tampons and everything. <laughs> and he had to squeegee that screen. That was his job. Oh my I'm like, God. you win, Preston. <laughs> Did I... Did you not meet Preston on a commercial audition? It wasn't. It was the no. I I met Preston through friends. I think through beautiful Jason. Oh yeah. And through that group is how I first met Preston. But when the show we were getting the show for Jackass, he was also my then wife had a jewelry line, and we need people to like make the jewelry and bag it and tag it. And Preston was sitting on the couch bagging and tagging the jewelry along with myself and whoever else we could find. Nice. I'm like, hey, you want to be on a show? He's like, sure. What came, <laughs> what came first, Jackass or the offer to do stunts on Saturday Night Live? Um, Jackass came first. And right as we were getting ready to go make the pilot, because the deal... Took for it took over a year for the deal to get done for Jackass. Yeah, what, what made it so slow? <clears throat> I don't know. You have to talk to the lawyers. The but insurance it took forever. That they're gonna have to have the. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but at the eleventh hour, I got the offer from Saturday Night Live, and I went to the Beverly Hills Hotel and met Lauren Michaels in the Polo Lounge, which incidentally is where. Fear and Lowly in Las Vegas started out Hunter S. Thompson's novel. So I'm, and it was another connection to Hunter. And God, it was, it was, you know, I was going to get five minutes on the show to do like a stunt or a prank every week. And, uh, and for a guy who was waiting tables and suddenly I, I, oh, I got this pilot I'm about to shoot. And then Saturday Night Live wants me to do something. And it was a lot, <laughs> you know, because it's like, Everything could fail. I could make the wrong decision, but I just thought, God, I'm just going to bet on myself and my friends. Because on SNL, I would have been lucky to be on SNL, but I wouldn't have any control. There is a lot to be said for not letting other people control your stuff. And wow, is it important not to let other people control your private information. And that's why NordVPN is so important. It stops people from snooping into all your bank account information, all your private stuff. It keeps you safe and it allows you to enjoy stuff as if you were in other countries. Why? Because it changes your location online. It doesn't let anybody know what you're up to or where you are. And it opens up all kinds of entertainment, so it just pays for itself. Nord VPN. And wow, do they have a huge deal for you guys. I'm talking about a major discount if you go to nordvpn.com slash stevo. That's N-O-R-D-V-P-N dot com slash stevo for huge savings plus four additional free months on your two-year plan. And get this, there's nothing to lose because you've got a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee. If you don't love it, then get your money back. You got nothing to lose except for all of your private information, everything in your bank accounts, if you don't take this step to protect yourself by going to nordvpn.com slash stevo. Now, let's get back to it. You know? Right. And, you know, like, Jackass is big on tone, and if I'm not controlling the tone along with, you know, Jeff yeah. and Spike, it's... I don't know. I, I just bet on myself. And it could have been a big failure. I know we tried our best, but it succeeded. <laughs> yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. I think that a lot of people would have no idea that Saturday Night Live offered that to you and mm. what it would have looked like. I mean, it would have felt like uh, kind of a non sequitur maybe, you know, like something that just didn't quite fit yeah. in with everything mm. else. And most people serving tables would have... F dropped what they're doing right away and went on Saturday Night Live. For sure. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when the uh, uh, Jackass pilot was, was coming together. Um, I had an offer to be in a, a music video, some kind of video project for the band Offspring. And they were like, oh, no. I was like, yeah, I got, I got you know. The, and, and they were like, Your no, favorite. do it do it for us. You can't do this and that. And I was like, eh, I think I'm going to go with what, the Spike what, Jones project. What you, <laughs> you, what, you couldn't do an Offspring video and Jackass? I don't know. Like, there was something or other, like, it was uh, whoever was in charge at the time, whoever I was talking to was a little bit uh, – bullheaded about it to say the least and ever since then whenever offspring has come on the radio or anything like that i'm like turn it off i just can't (laughs) is that why yeah (laughs) because it reminds you of that situation or because you you really don't i'm not saying there's anybody in the band i don't even remember who i was talking to but i didn't like the way that they spoke to me. <laughs> oh my, I thought you just were so annoyed at the like tone of their music that you're like, turn this, every time it comes on, you're like, turn that fucking shit off. <laughs> but it's because it reminds I mean, you of- It's just a resentment. It's just all of it. <laughs> it's all of it. Oh my, that would all make sense. Yeah. Not um, one to hold a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, it's so funny. You can't well, even look at this on the screen right here. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like I, I don't get what a lot of the stuff that I hear in their songs, too. It's kind of, it all just, <laughs> I don't know. But, <laughs> look at you, whatever. you're getting uncomfortable. You're I, like, I, I am. <laughs> well, I, I remember, am. like, when we were about to do the pilot we're for Jackass, I was meeting with Jonas Ockerlund, who was doing like this punk rock. He was trying to put, to put together this punk rock circus. And I was like, Jonas, you got to meet my friend Steve-O. Like, he's a clown. He's very good. You know, we're about to do this pilot, but I don't, you know, I don't think it's going to go anywhere really. So, like, it would be great for you to get Steve-O in your circus. I was just trying to get you a gig because I thought ours was going to go... Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. I remember when when I first met you in person was December thirtieth of nineteen ninety nine. Jesus, it was the day before That's weird. Stalker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was the day before New um, Year's. Day before New Year's, the big Y two K, and I oh. I had flown myself out to California to do my stilt stunt with the stilt costume on fire and the unicyclist and the skateboarder jumping off the roof of the house over my head through the fireball. And uh, I thought I was trying to shoot a cover for Big Brother magazine, but when I got out there, you know, here's Knoxville and Tremaine. <clears throat> I forget if it was Ballard or, you know, but, but, but it, and Tremaine said, now that you're here, and I can tell you we're not just shooting this for, for the magazine. We're actually shooting this for a pilot for, uh, for MTV. And Jackass wasn't even... Uh, the name it was just kind of an untitled yeah. <laughs> untitled uh, you know pilot for MTV and you guys had no idea what it even was i remember before mm. my stilt stunt like uh, you and i sat down on uh like a, a couple bales of hay in the back of this house and like you kind of interviewed me we didn't know if like if uh if it was going to be like an interview the subject yeah. kind of a thing before the bit or maybe you guys were uh, toying around with the idea of it was going to be like a talk show desk kind of a thing yeah. cutting to throwing to clips hmm. but it ultimately it just ended up being like okay forget about a format just make it well we had the we had the call of spike we're like do it is there a sitting behind the desk portion of the show or this or that? And he's like, you guys are already doing the show. Just make it like the Big Brother videos. Yeah. And we're like, oh, yeah, that's that's where we're going with it. Um, <laughs> what was your first impression of Steve when you first met him? Uh, he was very excitable. Um, and, uh, I mean, I can be a lot, but Steve-O could be a lot, especially when <laughs> you were involved. using... Yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember when like we the, on the show, it was like you were not that I wasn't drinking and doing right. pills. We both, we, we both were, but like you and I are always going opposite directions, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, 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 that's a very kind way to put it. No, no, but it's like you were like, you just wanted to get smashed. Yeah. And I was just 
wanting to go to the bar and you know yeah and have a get distracted with women or something yeah i wanted to draw attention to myself and you wanted to kind of duck out of yeah the the attention and i was just a lot i i i was i was a lot um but you also knew that you were a lot it's not like and that's that that goes a long way <clears throat> social awareness of like yeah people are getting uncomfortable yeah he at that time he couldn't do anything about it but i mean yeah. he knew he was a lot uh -huh. but he, he couldn't calm himself down but then it's just like you just learned like that's how he is he knows it and you you, you just love him you know the uh there are times I remember I'm just being like, I just aren't like, I remember what? multiple times where uh, you like not subtly, not slyly, like just put like pills in, in my food or, you know. Oh yeah, 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 I, I yeah. Just, like, big kind of, just, just, let me just stick two Xanax bars in Steve-O's sandwich right now. Blatantly, like he, he knows they're there, but just make him eat these two Xanax bars just to try to get him to come down a couple notches. And even that wouldn't do it. My, one of my favorite moves with Steve-O, I walk up to him and I stomp on his foot. He go, ah! And then I pop up Xanax in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I think you learned... To stop giving me Adderall pills. But the early. Xanax really didn't work either. <laughs> you know, it's just like. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, don't strike me as somebody that ever said, like, no, 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 I've had too much. Like, you probably just were down yeah, to go. Dude, I was yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I was just gnarly. And, and I think that, that over the years since then, um, I, I, like, I, I'm very happy to have been, have become an easier guy to be around. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully I have too, because like I, I, I had a, a long way to go in that area. Um, just feeling like you, like sometimes you always need to be on and it causing as much chaos as possible because yeah. that's what we did for a living. And then it's like, and then, yeah, for sure. But you know, like the, I was telling the guys this before that, uh, you know, for all the people, <laughs> You know, like the, the jackass is so loved, and what people always say about it is, you know, that how the the camaraderie between all the guys just really reads. You know, you can tell that everybody says you can tell you guys just love each other so much, and that's what makes it work. This great chemistry, and I, I don't disagree with that at all. But like I was telling the guys, it, it kind of hurts my heart that we don't like really get together for dinner like very often at all you know like and, yeah. like, and, and I feel like it's just uh, it's so beautiful that we've had this relationship for decades now that we've here we are growing old together and uh, you know I want we're growing old together we've become like more mature better adjusted versions of ourselves and I want us to be able to spend more time and have more of a relationship yeah yeah I, I could do better in that department for sure because I, I, I never gone. I never like I just like being home with right. the kids and Emily in our lousy dog bucket yeah um and, and I don't want to say that we've not had a, a great relationship because we have and uh you know I brought my my uh, limited edition numbered print Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, you finally photo. took the price tag off of it. <laughs> <laughs> For and years, he just had the picture on his wall with the price tag next to it. Well, yeah, he it, said even before that, he just put tape on the wall and had it yeah. hanging up in his. Well, room. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the year I think was uh, 2005 or 2006. Knoxville says, "Hey, man, I you know I got you something, and uh, to go pick it up at this address." So I go into this place. It was kind of a nondescript store. I didn't even really know what it was. And I said, hey, you got something for me. And they, they hand me this big, uh, flat, brown paper bag. And I pull out of it. It's this print of Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, wow, because Ozzy was my hero. I always said, like, man, I want to party like Ozzy. He was so out of control. Such, such a maniac. And I want to, like, be that. And uh, pulled it out. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I look in the bag, and there's the receipt. <laughs> And, and the receipt shows that the <laughs> price of the f print was f more than $1,500. I was like, wow. And it says right on there, like, it's, it's 21 of 90 in existence. This God. picture. Of, and I didn't even frame it for you. <laughs> uh, hey, Steve-O, go pick up your gift. <laughs>
Oh, come on, let's face it. Wrapping gifts is just a waste of paper. But the biggest waste of paper is when you smear poop all over your own butthole with toilet paper. It's so stupid, I can't believe it. I mean, come on. When's everybody going to start washing their buttholes with bidets from Hello Tushy? I've been doing it for years. It's my favorite product I've ever been introduced to by this podcast. I love my bidet from Hello Tushy. And wow, do they have a special deal for you, man, so that you too can conveniently twist a dial and feel that refreshing blast just washing your butthole. Man, you've got to try it. And if you go to hellotushy.com slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo for a limited time, you will get 15% off your first bidet order. And that applies to every bidet that they have, plus free shipping. You can't beat it, man. It's the best product I've ever promoted, and this deal is for a limited time only. So go to hellotushy.com slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo. By the way, there's not a better holiday gift out there. So jump on it, and let's get back to it. <laughs> what an ass. <laughs> and, and, like, a poster tube. I, I, I brought it home to my apartment at the time, just grabbed a piece of tape and just stuck it with no yeah. frame. I, I just taped the, the the print to the wall, and then right next to it, I taped the receipt that said 1500 bucks to the wall. And then, like, shortly thereafter, I was on MTV Cribs and, like, like highlighted it and, like, bragged about it. Like, here's the print and here's the receipt. <clears throat> so funny. <laughs> and you know what? It, it became, like, such a more beautiful thing because I, I, I went on to learn that that picture is was taken in 1974 of Ozzy Osbourne and it was taken in London, England. And I was born in 1974 in London, England. Like that photo he was snapped that. as I was- Oh yeah, I, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the whole time. But yeah, it's just rare. I mean, there's just been things like that over the years that- That's Mick Rock, right? Yeah, and he just passed away. Yeah. Well, speaking of artwork, yeah, speaking of artwork. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Ozzy Osbourne artwork. Yeah, I mean, we, we have, uh, we decided that we should do another collab that people can be excited about. Yes. And uh, we are just introducing to the world our new skateboard design. Yes, I'm really psyched on this one. I was psyched on the last one, but this one is, uh, you know, from a really great... Uh, yeah. Artist Todd Braytrude, a legend in, in in art and particularly skateboard art, and and the first skateboard collab that that we did, like I I kind of uh, pulled it together, made it happen, steered the ship, and this time you were the kind of creative engine behind it, and so it's kind of cool. Like I I I drummed up the first one, you drummed up the second one. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean we. I was more the producer on it, you know, uh, yeah. just trying to get it done and going back and forth between you and, and Todd. And yeah, it was, uh, I'm really psyched with how now, the first it, yeah. one was the Johnny O. Is this the Johnny O or the, uh, the, um, we're calling this Johnny, Johnny O 2.0. 2. 2. 2. Oh, wow. I okay. think so. And then here I am signing for the very first time here you go i think in black okay sure all right where where where's a good place to sign yeah. you're a, you're I, a pro at this uh i don't know i, I kind of think that go that way maybe go this way i mean i don't know you tell you tell me but let's not let's not uh water down our fascinating conversation oh yeah yeah here we go <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Now, are one of you guys going to keep that first one, or are you going to give that one? Or Here we put go. that for sale on the website already. I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. But in any case, it's exciting. The first one was uh, was great. The the first one, I mean, they're going on eBay for more than six hundred bucks. Sheesh. It's uh, it's unbelievable. So these things have proven to increase in value and i expect that this one will be uh even more the case because i don't think that we're trying to push this one for very long yeah and and todd is an amazing artist so yeah and, and, and i love that I, I love that you reached out to do that again yeah um 
I, I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so on this art, for people just listening, you are holding a cattle prod. Yes. Which is something that is near and dear to your heart. <laughs> yes. And we, in this very van, heard Eric Andre really, really butthurt about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so He's I, very sensitive. Yeah. Uh, um I mean, we all love Eric Andre, and, yeah. and yes, he's also very sensitive. So I just wonder if, um, you know, he described uh, he quit the show, he came back to the show, he couldn't stand it, it was too much like, you know, you were terrorizing him. If you could characterize the experience with, uh, with yeah, Eric. He, he quit the show three times times in the first seven days <laughs> you know and, and the show is called prank panel <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 and um yeah it was very traumatic for him starting out because i thought you know we're going to go at each other and uh <laughs> i went at him and i think it came down to he's not he's used to being the hammer and not the nail and yeah. To be the nail, it just kind of threw him back on his heels. Uh, but yeah, I mean, finally the on the third time he quit, he was like he was done for good. Yeah, he and so like Kim was having to call me. Like the first time he quit, I was in Minnesota with Emily, seeing her parents. He's like, "You got to call me," and I call. He's like, "Eric quit." I'm like, "What?" Because he had pranked me that Friday. What does that look like when he pranks you? It didn't go so good. Uh, he brought out a stun wand and uh, hit me with okay. it. See, I think you guys were kind of maybe loosely interchanging the idea of prank with assault. <laughs> I don't think... <laughs> yeah, I don't... No, I don't think that's... <laughs> like, is it assault when I go after you guys on Jackass? I mean, certainly not on Jackass, but I think that, uh, like, Eric Andre... What's a prank? <laughs> yeah. It's... <laughs> Assault, it takes it into like, whoa, we're right. not there. Like, right. it, it, this is all for humor. Um, right, understood. And I think that when I say assault, that's obviously not my take on it. I think that that was the... Oh, yeah, no, that was running that, through his mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Well, that's that's not the game we're playing. Right. Um, but, I mean, of course, uh, I got it. we got him to come back, and I just we just couldn't prank each other anymore the rest of the season. Or I couldn't prank him and uh it was fine uh and overall it was a, a good experience with the show are you guys gonna do any more uh yeah it was a good experience it was hard it was very hard because when we're pranking on jackass you 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 set up the prank and run people through all day long till you get the right. desired reaction and on this you've only got one mark you only got one mark you yeah. know you're pranking someone's sister or brother and right. But pretty early on, I'm like, we're going to have to bring in other practice marks to have something to air if it goes wrong. Right. So that happened a few times, and thank God we had practice marks. Because you, even if on <coughs> you're doing pranks, you're not going to go 20 for 20, and we had to get 20 of those. Mm -hmm. So first we were going to do like 30 pranks to get 20, but by the end of the year, we had to, the money ran out. We had to go 20 for 20. So it was tough, hmm. but I think we did pretty good. Some of the pranks we pulled off were like as epic as anything we had done on Jackass, like two or three of them. Um, so, yeah, the clown one. The clown one. Did you see, that, ever see the clown one? You know, I, I, I saw, like, I didn't see the whole episode. I just well, saw, you like, bits of it. Well, you got to watch the clown I one. Know, I'm, <clears throat> I know I, you, you told me about that, and, and I've been uh, terrible. You know, like I, I, I love you so much, and and I've, uh, I've, I've, I've never seen like your your acting in in movies. It's a weird thing, and it's almost like a, a streak that like I've I've just kept pres preserved. That like from. Ages and ages and ages ago, I, I was able to say, I've never watched a Johnny Knoxville movie that I wasn't in. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and then recently, it, uh, it occurred to me because I, you know, I, I kept the streak alive. And I thought... Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you shouldn't right. have. I know, but but now I think like I like it. it but it I said you're me. missing out because there's that movie, what, right. uh Alan Parsons Project, or what, what, what's the movie the called? Grand the Theft Parsons. Grand oh, Theft yeah. Parsons. Sorry. Yeah. Th- that uh, I, I love that movie. Well, thanks. I I wasn't too happy with my performance in that, and that was very early on. But there there uh, have been some that uh, I would like you to watch, Steve. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I, I, I would. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Th- I'm gonna. Th- 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 idea of not having seen your movies is silly, and uh, it. it, it struck me as and a little selfish <laughs> he's like if i don't got a piece of the back no, end yeah. I'm yeah, he's there. <laughs> no no i'm sorry uh, wait, hold on I, 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 I watched bad grandpa and it was genius oh okay well you, okay, you so, got a little so, taste yeah yeah there was a little taste in yeah there. oh yeah i did, yeah, have, yeah, oh, yeah. did have a little taste <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. 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 you got a taste yeah okay <laughs> so what, what knocks on me is by a little taste i wasn't in the movie on screen but i did have a little taste of the back end. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a generous thing because you guys said since uh it was under the jackass banner yeah that uh the jackass guys and when he was doing that you were originally bummed if i'm honest i was bummed But you know what I'm bummed about today is people destroying the world, making crappy products and exploiting the people who made them. I'm talking about crappy clothes, okay? And that's why I'm so hyped about Outer Known. My bro, Kelly Slater, started this company for a better planet, man. Come on. They use organic and recycled materials and they're made in fair trade factories where people are treated nicely and it's all way better for the world and it looks way cooler when you wear it. So they've got a killer deal for you. If you go to outerknown.com slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo, then all of my friends and followers enjoy 25% off their entire order. That is a massive discount. You should jump on this immediately by going to outerknown.com. That's O-U-T-E-R-K-N-O-W-N dot com slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo for that massive 25% off your entire order. Hop on it and let's get back to it. Because well, he, thought, here's, the, here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. And and uh, I may have had a conversation with somebody in a different setting who said that uh, that all Paramount wanted was more jackass, but all Knoxville wanted was like uh, like to, to do real movies. Like you know, it's like yeah, the jackass is great, but I want to preserve the legacy. And and really, what I want is to be like a you know movies so, so this guy says i kind of lied to my bosses saying you know i'm gonna get knoxville to do jackass four but really what they were talking about was bad grandpa and so the tra the tragedy of it for me was that that it came out on the internet and the story was paramount pictures has bought jackass4.com, jackass4movie.com, jackass... And, and I was like, wait, like, they're, they're doing this. And that was... Uh, what it was was Bad Grandpa. But they initially snatched up all the Jackass Ford thing. And I think it was a way... The, the Bad Grandpa was a way to, uh, to get Paramount happy they had more Jackass and to get you happy that you had, like more of a, like a, a movie <laughs> situation. This was how it was described to me. Yeah, I don't... I, someone said they were trying to get me to do Jackass Four, and we did Jack. We did Bad Grandpa instead. They did not. They, they, this, this, the Paramount wanted Jackass Four, and so that said, so Paramount was told you guys are going to get Jackass Four. You wanted no. Paramount was never ever told that, ever. Like we decide like at the last second, and then we call up Paramount. Hey, we, we we'd like to do another one. Well, then I've been lied to. Yeah. There All was never. Time, you were so bummed for nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was like I saw the stories about they bought up jackass4.com. And they probably that. did, but that was like. I never promised them. That was in two, 2011 or 12, we did Bad Grandpa something. Um, it, it was uh, 2000. 12 yeah 2012 because when we went to bad we went to paramount to pitch two films the day we pitched bad grandpa and we pitched uh a movie with broken lizard the broken lizard guys where willie was going to play willie nelson was going to play this 
ass kicking karate guy. So you get to see Willie nice. Nelson <laughs> kick ass. And we were praying they bought that one. Jeff and I are like, I, we hope they don't pick Bad Grandpa because that's going to be a fucking nightmare to pull off. You know, the whole movie's de- predicated on like yeah. people reacting. That's the last thing we wanted. And we went in there and pitched. And then they said, we want to do Bad Grandpa. And we're like, I think we look like we've been punched in the stomach. And we came out of there, walking out of Paramount. Someone just bought a movie from us. It was like a death in the family. <laughs> we were uh, so bummed. Really? Wow. The actual process of shooting it, too, was uh, like like with you and Jeff. Like, was it? No, I wasn't there. But were you guys kind of at odds with each other creatively? Um, it was very, it was incredibly difficult that film because like I said it's all predicated on people reacting and we had a story and I think we were it was very stressful so yeah there was a little tension between Jeff and I at times on that film just because it was it was incredibly difficult. Well, you know? right. And when you say predicated on reactions, what you mean is the the film was comprised like exclusively of hidden camera footage. Like yeah, very, yeah. very little scripted filler to, to drive it along. And like the, the fact that you did that, unbelievably impressive. But like what you get one thing and then now you got to bring, go back to the drawing board and be like, oh, well, we thought the story was going this way, but what we got is this. So now we got to kind of... Yeah, I mean, we, the first couple of trips, like we had a loose narrative, like where the story was going to begin and end. But I would be doing these pranks on the first couple of trips, and I didn't know where I was in the story, right? So I don't know what to push along or to say. Or And finally, we came home after. We'd been getting great stuff, but we didn't know where we were in the story. And Spike finally, he goes, hey, I read your guy's treatment that you wrote up. That's not a story. <laughs> He's like, we got to shut down and just work on the the story. It was either the whole month of November, or maybe the whole month of November. And we did, and he came by, and he really hashed out the story with us. Not too much, not too much story. We didn't want to include. Keep it simple. Very simple. But it really changed everything because when we went back out on the road the following January next year, I knew exactly where I was in the story and what I needed to do and what I could do. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I'm, I'm so happy we did it now. And, you know, like before we shot that first prank in the movie, I was still in my re- I was really bummed and I was just <laughs> focused on, I was just like telling myself, Oh, it's going to suck to sit in the, yeah. the, this, get the makeup done for three three and a half hours every day and and that was not actually what was happening i mean it took that long but i was more scared about failing and thinking i'm gonna shoot this for three months and have to turn it into a jackass because we're not going to get anything Mm. but after the very first prank we did it went good didn't make it the movie but it went good and all that stress went away and i felt like I think we got this. I got this. Yeah. Is it, it more stressful shooting the reaction stuff than, say, knowing you're going to get hit by a bull? It's different. A different kind of stress? Yeah. 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 Um, I I get more stressed for stunts watching them do something dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I get nervous myself, but I just don't like watching them when it gets too big <clears throat> to do anything too big. Yeah, it's, uh, I remember my uh, stunt where I, I laid down in the rocket engine fuel and the guys lit it and I ended up oh, no, I burned didn't. up. <laughs> that wasn't even a stunt. That was like a cry for help, I thought. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> you know, it was. It's yeah. like I called you and I'm like, I don't. Yeah, well, I remember it. Like, it, 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 There's a lot of other stuff that went along with that yeah. prank, and I don't right. know how much you want to get into that, it, but it, you, it, you were in a kind of a way at that time. 
That that actually sent me into a way, kind of. But yeah, I was, I was. It was. Uh, there. Yeah, the next five. Days we had a little talk fun. after I saw yeah. that video. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a tough one, but at the same <laughs> time, like 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 on my new bucket list special, where I get the the four inch needle in my spine and I'm paralyzed, and the guys are like, you know like testing how paralyzed I am with paintballs and tasers and flames and like I that, did. that's a tight Good times <laughs> that's a bad situation to be in for us because it's like here we are he's paralyzed from the waist down and like the whole bit is relying on us seeing if his legs are dead and so like we have to do it because it's the bit it's it you know we went big for it and while I'm doing it in my head I'm thinking like okay if he dies and this footage goes before a judge the judge is like, I'm sorry, you guys did what? <laughs> what? You know? And so like and who's there, producing this? <laughs> Me. <laughs> and, and it's like, but if we don't do it, well, right. we don't torture you on the ground, you're gonna be done and be like, dude, I, w I did all this for nothing. Yeah. And then well, right. if we did do it and you something did happen to you, I'm sitting there lighting your feet on fire, shooting you up with the fucking paintball or <laughs> Right. It was in my head. I'm thinking like being in front of a grand jury, like I'm fucked. Well, well, you're burying the lead too, because what we didn't expect was that as I'm laying there on the ground, that my whole like respiratory system seems to be shutting down. I can't feel like any indication that I'm able to breathe. For me to draw enough breath to tell you guys that yeah. I was having trouble breathing was like difficult. <laughs> well, and then I remember <laughs> we talked about like a fucking nightmare. Yeah. At that point, did. And, like, and, I guess you had medical attention on the set. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, it was I, I was, the, the doctor was appropriately dressed up as a clown. <laughs> he was the anesthesiologist, I guess. Uh, like, I'm not even going to be specific, but... <laughs> 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 okay, he was my old dealer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the a, thing is, before was he that, a doctor? Uh, he was a medical professional. Yes, he was. A, he was absolutely a medical professional. A doctor. Yes. Okay. But here, here's the fucked up thing, because we we had a meeting with Dr. Drew before this, and Dr. Drew's like, you know... It was Dr. Drew? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I reached out to Dr. Drew and ran the idea by him. Oh, poor and, Dr. And, Drew. And he said, he said, well, it, it, he it's said, safe, I, but you'll know it's going bad if the medicine goes upwards into your diaphragm and you can't breathe. So he's saying... He says, I really watch out as you find yourself becoming paralyzed above the waist. Because sometimes this stuff can back up and then you're going to have your systems shutting down and, and that's bad. And yeah. that seemed to be precisely what was happening during the bit. And How so, far like, up were you numb? I couldn't feel and I couldn't feel my chest at all. I could not tell that I was able to. Did breathe. they get you to the hospital then? No, no, they never got me to the hospital. The, no. the, 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 the clown doctor was like, "It's okay, you're fine," you know, and like the clown <laughs> doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh! And like the uh, you know, uh -huh. and, 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 it was it was it was just like it was just very intense. And in that circumstance here, like these guys, their job is to like do all this terrible stuff to me. So that's kind of what what was going on but by the end of it this this happened in august in the baking sun and like i can't feel what's going on so maybe i'm being burned up they carry me over and lay me down on the concrete and i just start sobbing i just start sobbing and the the, the clown doctor is, is he's confused as to what's going on so and my and through my tears i say the bar for my stunts is so high and like <laughs> we, and we fucking raised it man and it was just these tears of joy because I had done something that was like far and away more like just fucked up and like you know I remember offering the bit to you for for jackass and you're like hey buddy you know like we can't like break the law for, for a movie <laughs> well i just didn't want I, what i was having trouble with was i don't want to anesthetize you you well, being true, being too. you know right but your history with drugs an epidural is ways down so that what that actually wasn't a concern it was just like yeah i don't know i just it was a fucked but up situation. It was a fucked up situation, and that was the beauty of it. And and I know that when that when you saw the footage, you were like, "Hey, man, like that to me is kind of dark." And and like in my view, uh, I agree, it's kind of dark. And and I would say that, man, like watching you snoring on the ground after the bull flips you in, into your head yeah, yeah, is yeah, also yeah. dark. Sure, you know? sure. And like, <laughs> yeah. Our, our, like our, in in a lot of ways, our darkest moments are like the magic. 
of it, you know? And, and so I just love it. Is that one you would never do again? Oh, the epidural? Yeah. Man, there's there there, oh, there, there are things that could be done with an epidural, <laughs> but like but it's not on my list. <laughs> well, if, if you've done it, you've done it. You know, it's like yeah, you right. want to retire epidurals. Um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, but I think that that uh, someone other than me, because of my history with drugs, there should be a tranquilizer dart foot race. Yeah, the tranquilizer dart is different because it's going to go into your muscle. Yeah, well, yeah, we yeah. always wanted to do that idea, um, but I think it's tough to, when the dart goes in. You, it absorbs you, through the muscle. Well, you don't want the, you to pump a bunch of air into a vein or something. Yeah. Then you're then Do you're you toast. have bits locked away in a vault that you guys have never done? That well, he's got, you got books. Yeah, there's a lot. A, a lot. There's yeah. a lot of stuff that we haven't gotten to. Yeah. Well, I bought out jackass5.com. So <laughs> 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 uh, it, it's crazy how often people ask me, so are you guys going to do another one? You know, I mean, we could be on jackass 27. And it'll be like, so what's up with 28? Well, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I, my, my answer is always... I just can't imagine it happening, but don't take my word for it because I would have said the same thing about a Jackass 4. For for 10 years to go by with no Jackass and all of a sudden you reach out and say, guys, I'm ready to go again. I I know, I, that's happened on the last two. Like, like on Jackass 4, I started getting that twitchy feeling that I wanted to do it again. And then we were around 2000 eight-ish or nine-ish we had a office over off a of sunset yeah for jackass world yeah and i and i just started watching so much tom and jerry again and i started getting that feeling and well that's what inspired you tom and jerry well i just knew that i was trying to think of ideas huh. right i knew that i wanted to do another one so i was watching and i and i thought jeff would like because we had a desk right across from each other and yeah. i think he would see tom and jerry and he's like he would put two and two together. Finally, I said, I, I want to do another one. And he was so shocked. A lot yeah. of people, everyone was shocked on that one too. Was yeah, it your imagine. idea for the new cast? Was that? Was it your idea for the new cast? Uh, I, I, I think it was a collective idea. Collective meaning between you, Jeff, and Spike. Yeah, I think we just talked and we we're like, it would be good to bring on some fresh blood because. Right. It might be tonally weird to watch a bunch mm -hmm. of old guys do it. You know, it could be sweaty. Yeah. That, so. <laughs> that was the word. Yeah. I want to bring up uh, and, and apologize. The The movie I was talking about was Grand, it wasn't Grand Theft Parsons. I'm really bad at movies and, and, and names and remembering things, but it was the one where you played uh, a, a, a boyfriend, a drug dealing boyfriend. And it was based on a true story. Oh, small apartments? No, it was uh, it, it was on Netflix, and uh, it's, it's oh oh that was with and the girl falls in love with the cop and the cop is dirty and <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. But that... you played your role in that was awesome, and I and I I was I'm meaning to ask like, how did you get involved in that? Because that's a movie based on a true story. Yes, I uh, it's above suspicion. Above Amelia, suspicion. Amelia Clark. Yeah, I was in that with her. That was really good. Philip Noyce is a great director. And I auditioned for that, and I'm, and usually if I have to audition, I never get it, because I'm terrible at auditioning. I just, it's too, I get too inside my head, right? Yeah. I can't relax, and I'm too inside my head. But that one, like, I was relaxed and did what I needed to do, and uh, we shot that in Kentucky about, two hours three out two and a half hours from where i was born huh. so it was nice um yeah if people get a chance to see that it, it that that's a it, it was a good movie yeah that's one of the ones i'm like i thought that usually like i i get sweaty watching myself i'm like oh but i thought okay i did all i did pretty good in that one i did uh I did a pretty good job in that one. I was going to say before that I had an idea for a YouTube video, a Johnny Knoxville movie marathon. <laughs> I'm going to watch them all and then like uh, like 
react or you know people make reaction videos and and I, I i put the idea aside i didn't think to pursue it because i wouldn't want it to like make it seem like you know disparaging or anything but i also would love to have the experience and and kind of, i think that there could be an idea there yeah you might want to space it out <laughs> i don't know if that's something you do over a weekend start with walking I, tall okay i wonder with uh is it it the way that society's changed and you know mm. gone woke and so sensitive like is the ringer a movie that you see as problematic in any in any way no not at all we made that movie with the support of the special olympics and they wanted us to <clears throat> to push the comedy and push push uh the boundaries um because you know our fan base is like who we're trying to get the word out to um and they 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 were fully on board and unfortunately i think i'm very proud of that movie and unfortunately i think people heard the synopsis that i was going to fake like yeah uh i was pretend to have a disability yeah and so i can enter the special olympics and I think people heard the premise and they're like, oh, that's, that's not for us. But it's actually a very uh, sweet movie, and I made so many friends on that. I mean, you've met Eddie sure. and John Taylor. Yeah. Uh, so. All right, so that's so the ringer's first up on my marathon. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm really proud. It's one of my favorite films. Okay, great. I love that movie. Um, um, you guys are neighbors? Yeah, uh, I, I bought a ranch in Tennessee. I don't want to uh, really like put it on blast for exactly where where it's at, but uh, I think that we actually I just learned today we own properties pretty near to each other. Oh well, I I, I well, you're kind of kind of giving it away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay then we can cut, we can People, all they have to do is look that up. Right. I, don't, I mean, I don't but know. I sold my property. The Johnny years, Cash. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. I sold it uh, years ago. Okay. But um, I mean, whatever, dude. I'm I not, mean, I think you even on a past podcast, you even said where it was. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's yeah. like you're driving around there with Stevo.com on the side of your van. <laughs> yeah. It's like people know. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a bat signal that says Stevo up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, you, whenever we, we text, it always seems to be that you're in the gym. And when, uh, whenever I go to go get CPAP equipment for my right. CPAP machine, like <clears throat> the little CPAP store is adjoined to the gym that you go to. Yeah. So it's just Knox was in the gym and in the gym, like all the time, like, what are you training for? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just have to like exercise because I've had so much trouble with my back. Okay. And so I have to do certain <clears throat> things to keep my back, you know from seizing up and also i'm an incredibly vain person right okay so uh um but i was just wondering maybe you were like uh hitting the bags getting her oh no i am i just started uh doing boxing lessons again too oh right yeah so that training for a big fight <laughs> 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 that's funny that's funny uh, yeah i really gotta get in shape for that one <laughs> no i just wanted to i just wanted to train again it's right. a lot of fun uh so um you, you uh I've, I've always been like very careful um to to not be chubby yes yes like is that something you have to put effort into because with me i'm like a yo-yo diet like i'm out of control with food and then i'm like i hit a rock bottom and then i just go the other way and then i get like kind of back in, in reasonable shape and then i think i'm good and then i start eating like an asshole again yeah yeah i you know my both my parents gained weight as they got older and i i, I just didn't want to gain uh, that much weight as I got older because so, it's just all kinds of health I problems. Know, right? and, yeah. So yeah, I've always very been very conscious of my weight and exercising. And yeah, I, I flip flop about five to 
nine pounds. Yeah, I've never seen you fat in my life. I was a little, I, I was a little uh, Ruben esque this time last Christmas because okay. we've been shooting uh, for <clears throat> a few months, mm -hmm. and I was there every day. Right and just eating whatever. The craft services really screws you yeah. on the movie. Craft services is like just a, the the snack setup. They they have just like the greatest snacks. Just a bunch of tables covered in easy food to just eat. So like we start movies and everybody's been like training, eating sensibly. They're looking their best. Maybe the first week, even the guys have their shirts off. But that craft service table just screws you as the production goes on. Yeah, it does. But like we never had craft service on the first couple of movies did we um i remember the the third movie like yeah. that, that first day when uh like the um the uh with the, the the above ground pool that Preston Lacey yeah. made that day that i saw that bit like uh recently it's so good and like we all had our shirts off. That was the first week of filming. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that and because we had a three D crew with us, and the crew got much bigger on the third one. So we're like, well, we got to have craft uh, craft service because that's what people who are in the business are used to. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't because I don't remember one on the first couple. Yeah, the the first everyone was so high. I don't think they'd be eating anyway. <laughs> Yeah, the first movie you had the uh, the cocaine buffet crafty service. Yeah, there. yeah. Something that that I've been thinking about lately, and I remember us doing it. I don't remember it ever coming out, but Are you talking about the bummer? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Are we allowed to talk about that? No, yet? we're not talking about the bummer. <laughs> and apologies for for all the times I tried to bully you into it. Um, <laughs> lately I've been thinking about uh, helium balloons. I just can't, you know, I know it's been done. I know that we even did it. The idea was like, uh, I think we sent up Bam with a bunch of helium balloons and he was supposed to shoot the balloons to come back down. Well, as written, I think I wrote the idea is to get one of those big weather balloons and walk up behind somebody with, uh, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, a carabiner. A carabiner and just pop it on their belt and watch them float away. Yeah. But then it's like, that's problematic because... <laughs> they fucking go into the atmosphere? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and even if we <laughs> do it over good. water. So... I'm so sorry. I seem to recall that at uh, the Team Pain compound in Orlando, I have a memory. I think it was Bam flying around with helium balloons. Maybe I, I'm just... Like, we did... We did a... Uh, we did do that, but he knew he was going up, and we had to put a tether on the balloon, too. Oh, okay. So that was the only way the insurance <coughs> would allow us to do it if we had a tether to the balloon, which defeats the whole fucking purpose of yeah. the idea. So we still, like, I don't know, we'll still try it, and we tried it, and he took a BB gun up and shot himself down, but... The reason it wasn't in was because he knew it was happening and there was a tether. And So without a tether, it's... Uh, what does a tether do? From the I floor? I mean, it's just saying like... You so there's a tether to the balloon, so it it's like he can never get away. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, He's leashed yeah. to the ground so he can't go up into the atmosphere. Yeah. Because um, cause I've just been... I've had that on my mind, man. Like... Uh, Doing what with To it? do the it without idea? a tether... Like, I was just thinking of ways to draw a lot of attention to myself to, to promote my bucket list <laughs> special. And uh, I thought if I just, like, was floating with a ton of helium balloons, like, um, in the right spot, that I might catch some headlines. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't someone, I don't know whether it was uh, a rumor or someone did it in a lawn chair? Yeah, there were that. I, I, Is I, that a, a false? I Googled it. I Googled it. I think it was in Canada. A guy, um, and I feel like he got uh, arrested or something. Arrested for what? Like international airspace? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but. Uh, I mean, how the fuck? I, 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 that doesn't look like a lawn. That looks like a pro job. Yeah. yeah right. Like, I, it's I, a hoarder. I, I don't know, like. <laughs> how to approach it i just like was thinking of like, well, what's a good way for me to 
to just do a big thing and and get a get a lot of uh yeah i guess i mean did the guy have a, a see even a parachute thing. is like a tether and you, you know went, it's yeah. like it you got to feels like you got to go for it or got to have a bb gun to shoot the balloon yeah yeah that seems high. fine like shoot one yeah. at a time like to yeah. ele- like regulate your elevation i i'm going to keep looking into it I probably shouldn't put this out there, but hey, you know I, what? I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, you can put it out there if you want. I just, I think surprising people yeah. is good too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So let's. So I'm cutting that too. So we're cutting that too. We're really fucking. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like a, uh, that. There's a. Sorry, there's a, is that a balloon the shape of a. Is that a cartoon or the? It's Pixar. Oh, because like if you made a big, huge balloon that looked like. Uh, Tremaine, and you flew up with that. Something's there. Yeah. All right. Um. So, uh, so, so the TV show with the, that you did today is um just a one-off thing you did. Yeah, for yeah, Alan. yeah. What do you have like uh on the horizon? If there's anything that you want to talk about. Um. Well, I do my radio show with. My cousin Roger. Yeah, you've been doing that forever. The big ass happy family jubilee on Outlaw Country on Sirius for we've done way over five hundred shows. Hmm. Um, so we've been doing that a long time, and that's usually the highlight of my week, getting to chat with him for an hour and play music. Uh, and I have a few films I'm getting ready to do next year because I've been off the whole year because of the strike. Yeah. Um. So I'm looking forward to that, and I I just started a podcast, but it's very premature, and uh, so more on that later. But what 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 are the movies? Can you talk about anything that for next year? Yeah, nah, yeah, I I don't know because like if you talk about a movie ahead of time and then it doesn't come out right, yeah. you're like, oh, I sh- I should have kept yeah, that yeah, under yeah. my hat. Mm-hmm. Well, I shouldn't good. have brought up Life Without Dick on Letterman before it was shot. <laughs> 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 you can skip that oh, one, Steve-O. The, but you might like the ones that are so bad there. Okay. But I don't know if it gets to so bad it's good. It may just kind of yeah, hover. Dude, Sharknado. That reminds me of something of legend that... Uh, the bummer? No, you were... <laughs> weren't you on Letterman? And like you were up in the rafters and jumped out and like badly hurt yourself landing and then sat through the interview. Yeah, I there was I think it was my first time on Letterman, and I jumped out of the whatever the, the catwalk, rigging, the rigging. Yeah, yeah, and sprained both my ankles. I wonder if that is there footage of that. Oh wow! Yeah, there's a, you can see footage of it, and I think any. Like a skater could have rolled out of it, but yeah. I didn't know how. I don't know how to fall, so I just went straight down. Yeah, I mean your lack. Uh, of, look at wow. that. <laughs> your lack of uh, ability to fall correctly makes you the most exciting professional skater. Well, thank you. Everything. No, I would do regular movies, and the stunt guys would try to teach me how to fall. I'm like, don't you dare! <laughs> I don't want to learn how to fall. Um, that's so great. Um, I wonder, uh, now like, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to this. Like, uh, I don't know that I could have done it any other way, but when I've been promoting my bucket list special, objectively, because I ejaculate on camera, because I've got the, the medical professionals. It, Literally on the camera? Uh, I think I did ejaculate mm-hmm. Just a on, little bit? On, okay. On, yeah. Um, with the ejaculation, with the the medical professionals stealing drugs and administering them in non-medical settings, like there's just a, a, a good amount of stuff that I simply would never have been able to do for Jackass. Yeah, that's and, true. And I uh, was not bashful about making that abundantly clear when I was promoting the bucket list special, but part of me... Like uh, by saying, you know, the stunts that he couldn't do for Jackass. Strong selling point, but I just kind of crawling into your head and imagining you seeing my bucket list promos. I almost feel you cringing when you see that. And I just want, I just want to. I've probably, I've probably seen your promos, but. Yeah. We're, we're good, Steve-O. Yeah, I don't. You know, it's like. (laughs) 
Yeah, I just, I, I'm just sensitive to that because I want to respect you, I want to respect the legacy, and I also want to. Uh, against well, the, well, thank you, but uh, you know, I, I get it. You got a, you got a thing to promote. So and, yeah, and and it's objectively true too. So yeah, I feel like, good about that. I really did push things pretty damn far. Yeah, that. whether it's like we couldn't do it legally, or right. I like. Jeff or I thought tonally maybe that's not right for us and so yeah it's stuff that wouldn't make jackass and you <laughs> yeah you, you did it yep um and uh I sent you a a line cut of uh you know a show like I, I think it's been you know well over a year since it's since there I mean it was just a long time ago is it was just a recording hopefully of one I of my shows. got notes back to you, you did. Oh, okay good oh a hundred percent of the time <laughs> I've ever sent you anything for notes you've always not only taken the time to to really uh, watch it or read it or, or whatever the case may be but really given back thoughtful notes well thank you and uh I, I took all of your notes on the bucket list very much to heart um, I had still had plenty of touring to do to to do my best to implement them. Mm -hmm. Like in in, uh, in some cases I I I did it a hundred percent. In other cases, like uh, I, I tried it, it didn't work. But the biggest they're note, not all hits, Steve. -O. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the biggest note was that you gave me was um, to try to be more conversational in my delivery. Mm. And and that inspired me to hire a, a speaking coach. Oh, really? Yeah, not a voice coach. Obviously, not a voice coach, <laughs> but, but a speaking coach. And and what that speaking coach, those sessions, it uh, man, it it felt like therapy. Like kind of like trying to chip away at like what is it that's making me so stiff? And, yeah. And like like uh. There was a self consciousness about being on stage performing live comedy. Sure. Like, how are, do people want to accept me? Or like, and and uh, it just helped so much. And that was totally because of you. And I think the bucket list is way better because of it. Oh, that's good. But I totally understand that because you're like, if I'm doing a character and I'm big, it, you're kind of you can hide behind that, yeah. right? And and they're not. And if something goes wrong, there it was the character, <laughs> but it, it's it's harder just to be yourself. Yeah, it's, it's it's hard to be in front of a crowd and be yourself. And of course, you're gonna, you know, try a, a bunch of different ways starting out. But the big the biggest thing was with the the, the speech coach, the, the speaking coach. Um, she said in the the stunt video, the vignettes that the you know are peppered throughout the performance you're very natural and loose and conversational yeah. and yet yeah, like and and while you're doing these like unbelievably crazy things but then when you're just on the stage like just talking that it's less natural like, yeah. why, why, just be the guy in the clips and that became my mantra yeah like i'm just the guy in the clips yeah mm. you're very funny and lovable and, and <clears throat> self-effacing and, and and you know very honest about your feelings in in the stuff we do is it is it harder for you to uh, f uh do a movie when, uh, or or like a, a jackass like are, are you more comfortable filming a clip on jackass or like when you're in a, a movie and you have the whole crew looking at you and you have to rehearse lines and um is there a big difference or is it uh and initially uh getting over the camera took a while <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I mean, just, I just remember in high school, I already said, I want to go out to Los Angeles to be an actor. You know, I'd already been very open about that. And someone came to our school to talk about uh, our lunch program and how we can do it better. And it was, we had to talk to people on camera and tell them, you know, it was like seven of us. And down the line, everyone was so natural and good. And when they were like, it's your turn, terror. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything. I just froze. And and it took, uh, I moved to L.A. and I would do scene study classes on camera. Uh, Jeremiah Comey, he's a great acting coach. And little by little, I was... I became less conscious of the camera, but at first it was, it's scary. But by the time I got around to doing films, 
Um, I was okay with the camera, but um, like when you're doing walking tall, were you uh, no, nervous not, about the camera? No, not at all. Like not I, at all. No, you. Um, no, I I conquered that fear cool. by the time I was doing that. I remember we were shooting the Jackass TV show while you were filming Walking Tall, and part of your contract for Walking Tall precluded you from being able to do any dangerous stunts. Well, I was doing uh, Big oh, Trouble. Big Trouble, yeah, 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 that's the Big one. Trouble was like, we did Jackass, and Big Trouble was like the second movie I got, but it was a big movie. Rene Russo, Tim Allen. Mm -hmm. Right, right, you're right. Um, Tom Sizemore, I had every scene with Tom Sizemore. And I... And then there was like Stanley Tucci and Dennis Farina, huge actors. Mm -hmm. Jason Lee was in it. I remember they flew me down first class to uh, Miami and I was already nervous because I wasn't supposed to do any stunts and I had a sprained ankle. So I'm like, okay, if they don't fire me for my acting, they're gonna fire me when I get there for my ankle. So I got in first class and it was great and I was like, this is terrible because this is what I'm about to say goodbye to. <laughs> and I get down to Miami and they pick me up back when they sent a limo. They picked me up in a limo, took me to my hotel room. It was a big suite. I'm like, this is even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Everything they did nice for me, I'm like, this is all going away tomorrow yeah. at the table read. Yeah. And, and so I, I, at the table read, every, every scene's with Tom Sizemore. I'm sitting across from Stanley Tucci, Dennis Farina, Rene Russo. Barry Sonnenfeld, his director, is down here. And I meet Sizemore, and he's like, hey, how about you be good today? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, fuck, this is terrible. And so we start doing our scene, and every line is with Tom. And Tom, I give him uh, a line, and he's about to say his line. He's like, what are you doing with this accent? This, it's terrible. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, oh, no. You know, this is everything's coming true <laughs> and i look down at the director and he's kind of looking at me and i look over at people across from me but i'm like you know what i felt like sylvester stallone and rhinestone i'm like if i'm going to die i'm going to die my way so i kept doing the accent <laughs> later 30 minutes later i give him a line he's about to do a line he's like you're still doing that accent barry and he looks at barry sonnenfeld Jesus. and stanley tucci looks over and he's like hmm and I thought it was a comment on me, but it wasn't. But anyway, long story short, afterwards, uh, Sonnenfeld came up and was like, don't, don't worry about Tom. Just keep doing it exactly the way you're doing it. And it was, it was a, which made me feel relieved, but I still was nervous. And Sizemore really laid it to me for those first couple of weeks of the film. But I just thought it was hilarious. It was a story that he was like really testing me. And then he saw that like I'm pretty unflappable and pretty easy going. And then he didn't like when other people talk to me. <laughs> like I like then I was his. So uh he's he's no longer wow. here. So but uh He's a great actor. It was just a pretty intense relationship sure. we had on our first trial by fire. Yeah. Hey, he's still doing that accent. I was like, oh, God. Uh, I remember that. Uh, yeah, it wasn't Walking Tall. It was Big Trouble. And you had this palatial hotel suite. And it was in that hotel suite, like on the balcony, where you stapled the jackass across my, uh, yeah, 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 my yeah. butt cheeks. Oh, really? Yeah. And because you were shooting the movie, like, you couldn't do any stunts. So, like, you were, like, carrying the dead alligator around, putting the fake baby on the roof of the car. Yeah. Like, uh, I felt really bad about that because you guys are out there putting it on the line, and I'm like, in a hotel suite in Coconut Grove. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember, um, the, in that, that palatial hotel suite, you had a suitcase that had, uh, like more pill bottles than clothing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I rattled when I walked. <laughs> yeah, Henry Thompson. And uh, you know, like it's 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 pretty incredible how things were back in those days. Like we were just so untethered, and uh, and like you just some people can just put it down. 
you know like yeah. like i uh, was not you know i had to really do the make a thing and and you just kind of outgrew the, all just that the phase huh? yeah yeah and you know like i i i could uh I, you know, kind of saved it more for the the road and whatnot because, you know, I had a kid and yeah. can't. But, uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know. We well, all then, we all got very lucky. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> We've well, all been very lucky. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, we can cut this out, but I, you've never, you guys never talked about, and I don't know if I should even say this, but you guys have matching tattoos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And my that. daughter got this tattoo. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm right, we got this tattoo. Do you want to cut that out? Um, I feel like they're, I, I, I don't think I've, they were too worried about it. I've seen it before, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're, we're precious about the fact that we got matching tattoos of the logo on the can of <laughs> video head cleaner that we were huffing. At. Yeah. That was it time. wasn't nitrous oxide. It was yeah. video head tape cleaner. <laughs> How did yeah. you guys hear to do that? Like, was, told you Someone was... told me. No, like... no. I remember this super well. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was Pennsylvania. We're shooting Jackass number two. And uh, they were busy filling up... Uh, like Bam's mom's house with the fake snow to to ride snow skis down the uh, the stairs like into the the door like it was a snow snow skiing inside the house was the bit it was taking forever to set up and uh, like you had just watched a, a movie about some like country music legend who was oh, sounds Van Zandt yeah yeah snipping glue and so you were far less concerned with the 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 snow blowing operation or the skiing than getting your hands on some air, air plane model glue yeah 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 you you were sending off like the 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 pa to go like to airplane model stores and come back with glue and then like we got back from pennsylvania and uh you know like i got a message from you and you said hey um uh full disclosure i've learned that uh that a video head cleaner is is a much better like a uh, much better than airplane glue a much cleaner buzz <laughs> well someone told me like there's a place on hollywood boulevard you can get nitrous nitrous oxide check this out knoxville hit me up with a note and i'm thinking oh he's gonna tell me to take out the whole part about huffing video head cleaner but his note was that when he said nitrous oxide just then what he meant to say was amyl nitrate so remember amyl nitrate not nitrous oxide <laughs> but you can't ask for that. You have to ask for a video head tape cleaner. And if you ask for nitrous oxide, they'll say they don't have it. But if you ask for a video head tape cleaner, they will give you that. So yeah, it was at the it was a porno shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a porno <laughs> shop, and it was called like a uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so somehow you and I like uh, you came over at like eight o'clock in the morning or something. We started our video head cleaner huffing session, and uh, next thing you know, we've we've got the idea to to go get tattoo matching tattoos of the logo on the can, and like we we, we went over to uh, the nearest tattoo shop, but they weren't open until like ten in the morning. So we just sat outside there, right on the the sidewalk, just spraying it on a sock and. <laughs> Uh, we, we we sat there until they opened up and we got our tattoos. Yeah, Tremaine would get very upset around that time if he walked up to me because I would just dump it on my shirt <laughs> and then hop it off my shirt. And if he saw my shirt wet, he would start complaining. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, it's, not, it's nothing to, yeah. Brag like, about. It's, but it's good, any, yeah, it's good to steer clear of it. Are there it. any scenes in Jackass where you have a stain on your shirt? Probably not. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, Everybody's gonna be looking for the. Wait, wait, wait. What do you think about this? Like, um, I've described that. Uh, yeah, because people ask me if um, it was easier to do stunts because I was loaded, you know. And and I said no, like, no, not really, like uh, an issue because the spirit of Jackass was never to be like visibly intoxicated yeah on the set. like, like if, if we thought someone was loaded we wouldn't let them do the stun right exactly and 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 i i, I tell people you know like boogie nights at the end of boogie nights like uh, mark Wahlberg is uh he's all like you know messed up on on speed and he's just too high and burt reynolds you know the 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 porn director says i'm not going to shoot you in this state 
So there are many times on Jackass that were very reminiscent of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm not going to shoot Tremaine's like, I'm not going to shoot you like this. And I seem to recall that on that same Jackass number two, that I was supposed to be the one that got the dick branded on my butt cheek, but that the Gooch came into my room because I wasn't to be found at call time, came into my room and I was like laying there with blue lips because I was all like flopping on the ground with uh, my nitrous oxide. Yeah. And and Gooch reported that to, to Tremaine, like, oh, like his lips were all blue. He was like God. flopping on the ground <laughs> like, and, and like inhaling nitrous oxide. And, uh, and I got... I got the Burt Reynolds treatment, and I think I think that's why Bam ended up with the the, the Dick brand. I don't think that was your only time getting the old Burt <laughs> Reynolds treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. But man, like it's so great to be able to look back on on all of that, and uh, you know, like from a good place. Yeah, like all our, uh, you know. Uh, whatever we tried mistakes uh <laughs> i mean back then it wasn't even necessarily mistakes we were just out of control and, yeah and it was working for us yeah you know like and then it stopped it, it, it worked until it didn't yeah <laughs> until the wheels fell it off and you like have wasn't. to formulate a new plan mm -hmm. you know i can't live that way anymore but i did yeah well dude i, I love it i love you i love you man and um yeah, man, I, I appreciate you. I, I think that we should we should make a point to reach out to each other and say, hey, like, let's just get together when it's not for for work. Yeah, yeah. I Go have a little uh, bagel or a schmear. And <clears throat> are, were you pulling up our new hot shit yeah, skateboard um, deck? I, I think I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm, like, the, the way you did the last one was Hart and Knoxville. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you to do one like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here you go. And, and, and it's it? just, I, I wonder if, like, if, if it's up here, because, you know, when we're signing, oh, like, that's not, maybe I, you know, like, because yeah, we're that. one up top and one down below, or I don't know. We'll, well you know, it's it interesting, the, the, the guys at the warehouse found a pattern in your signing. You, you always signed Hart Knoxville, like how you normally do. Yeah. But then when you take a break or you go on your phone or if you went to the bathroom and came back, the first signature was always giant oxville it was just random like yeah. every now and then i would screw up but then it's like well somebody gets the full signature I, yeah i think it's a cool little easter egg people can yeah. find and look at this penmanship steve -O. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i think you that, get that, a strongly worded I, I text think, i think that uh is smaller than i think you get more <laughs> more real estate but then again, I don't know. Well, with that, we'll see. Whatever, Wait. whatever uh, ends up on the website. Steve when are these available? When right now. They be? Oh, they're available now. They are available now. Available now. And, uh, do do we do we wait until this comes out? Before yeah. Well, we, yeah. Yeah. Now. Before means... we. Oh, so do, I mean, do we tell people about the yeah. skateboards now, or yeah, they are. Well, they're this episode's now. next week, right? This episode's next week. We will we will have signed. Yeah, the yeah, but next week then. this will be today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> okay, so have we got a day scheduled to sign the boards. Uh, we'll get one to you early before this comes out. Okay. All right. They are available now, so everybody go to stevo.com for the new Johnny O 2.0 skateboard and Stevo's bucket list. The wildly messed up and tonally dark. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Multimedia. Exciting, <laughs> very exciting, <laughs> groundbreaking. <laughs> awesome. Hilarious. <laughs> I, I love you, Captain Van. Love Thank you, buddy. You. All right. <laughs> Did I tell you or what? He really opened up about his checkered past, and I thought it was great. I also think this is great. Ladies and gentlemen, the Johnny O 2.0. And uh, if I, I'm going to tell you, we don't have many of these. We're trying to get more. We can't. All right, so hurry up and grab it at stevo.com. And as always, my beautiful street team. I love you so, so much. Yeah, dude. See that?